In this section, we're going to do a quick food bar on how a uh, very simple, insignificant, seemingly insignificant item like a, a lifter can cause serious problems in a 6 liter engine. One of the things that's always struck me in mechanics is how the very smallest item, very smallest, uh, seemingly insignificant part of the entire engine can cause uh, huge problems in the overall health and the way a motor runs, whether it's gasoline or diesel. In this particular truck, it came in as a no start uh, and had previously been in here for some turbocharger work. It was 203,000 mile truck, meticulous maintenance. This is the, the inside of this engine looks like it's got 20,000 miles on it, okay? It literally has been taken care of that well. And uh, it was a no start, so we checked into it and it didn't appear to have any high pressure oil. So, well, geez, I guess your high pressure oil pump failed, so we took it apart and, and put a new high pressure oil pump. Well, we still couldn't get it to start. Um, and that was a misdiagnosis on our part. Well, turns out that it wasn't building any low pressure oil. So we took the uh, oil pump out and uh, found that in the gears of the oil pump, you can see in here, uh, there was a, a roller bearing lodged in here. You can see it right here. The roller bearing was lodged in here, and there's another spot right there. Uh, and the gears themselves were all torn up. We said, well, shoot roller bearing. There's only one place that can come from inside the engine. And that would be a lifter. And this lifter has a roller in it that actually rolls on the cam uh, and uh, you know moves up and down and moves the valves as, as they're supposed to. Well, if this wheel breaks or there's damage in here, there's little bitty roller bearings that get, you know, can fall down into the oil pan. And I guess in this case, got sucked into the oil pump, damaged the oil pump, and damaged the front cover here. Not only did it damage the oil pump, but it damaged the front cover. We, uh, because the tolerances were so far out from being scarred up from the metal getting in there, we, uh, we uh, put a new oil pump in it and it still couldn't get any pressure. So at that point, we, we knew we had to replace the lifter, but we still wanted to you know, see if we could get the engine to run, build some pressure. In order to change a lifter in one of these engines, you have to pull the cylinder heads. There's no way to get to the lifter without pulling the cylinder heads. It's impossible. So, you know, at that point, because we knew there was debris in the oil pan, we decided let's just pull the engine and take it down. We get the engine taken apart to a point where we can see down in the engine and see which lifter had gone bad. Well, it's one of the rear ones. Being one of the rear lifters, in fact, it's this one right here, to get it out, this whole system for your high pressure oil pump has to be removed. Well, it unbolts and slides this way to come out. Well, that means that the whole rear cover has to come off. Well, the rear cover has to come off anyway because we have to change out the camshaft. But the point is, is that just to get to these lifters, the rear cover has to come off. Now, the other thing that really throws a, throws a, a monkey wrench into this, and this is an, this is an engine that we, the crankshaft was damaged in, I uh, had a broken connecting rod, but the, but the camshaft was in good shape. So we're going to have a used camshaft because uh, just like the front cover, we're going to have used because these are extremely expensive parts. <coughs> so to pull the camshaft, the whole rear cover has to come off, of course. And on the back of the crank is a hub. This is an adapter hub that, uh, that uh, will adapt the rear of the crankshaft to the Ford flywheel. Remember, this is an international engine. But to get the camshaft out, you have to go past this adapter. Well, you don't want to remove this adapter. This adapter is heated to be put on, and then it's balanced with the adapter on here. And if you don't get this back on exactly perfectly, then your rear main seal is going to pour oil. So, in order to get the camshaft out, you have to remove the crankshaft uh, if you're going to keep that adapter on there, which is what we always do. It's the only way to do it. In other words, what I'm getting at here, and I think you're starting to get the point, is to just change one failed lifter, a $40 part on this engine, we have to disassemble the entire engine. When we're done changing this out, the only thing that's going to still be attached to this engine block is the motor mount. Of course, all new seals, head gaskets, at that point you might as well go on and do the, uh, uh, do the head studs and just go through the whole thing. But the lifter is the only failed item in the entire engine, which of course broke the camshaft, which of course sucked metal into the oil pump and damaged the front cover. Now luckily we didn't get any metal get past the oil filter. So 
all our main rod bearings and everything are in good shape. The point I'm trying to make here is, is this is a hell of a lot of work just to change a lifter. A uh, lifter in most engines, and small block Chevys and, and gasoline engines that I grew up with, uh, that's a wear item. That's something that you just change. Uh, we would change them uh, every time we would pull the intake off if, if uh, we would change those lifters. It's not that way in this engine. That part is designed when it fails, they'll replace your short block at Ford. Just the short block from Ford is going to cost you $4,500 plus the 30, 35 hours to change everything out. Now here at Power Stroke Specialty, we're going to use the parts that we had to give a customer a better deal. But the point is, this is a tremendous amount of work. We're 40 hours labor into this thing. To be able to rebuild the engine for one failed component. Now, the people who designed this engine have some of the most advanced and sophisticated uh, computer-aided design uh, uh, software out there. And everything works beautifully in the virtual world. Well, this ain't the virtual world. This is a 203,000 mile motor that uh, the man's meticulously taken care of. And now I've got to get on the telephone and explain to him why he's got to spend the amount of money he's going to have to spend to fix this because of one failed lifter. That's the kind of problem that we have in the 6 liter. It's not a bad engine. It's a fantastic engine and it runs beautifully. It's extremely well designed. But it's not user friendly when it comes to doing work on it. Everything is labor intensive. Everything requires complete disassembly uh, to, to, to service it. Uh, so what I'm trying to illustrate here is that this is part of the reason why these engines are so expensive to repair. is because of the labor quotient involved. Oh, there's that lifter. There's that lifter that caused us so much trouble. Right there. And you can see all the little pieces, all the little bearings have fallen out of there and ended up in the bottom of the oil pan which caused Mr. Oil Pump to get the parts sucked up into it. You can see right here where all those little pieces got sucked up in there and caused all kinds of trouble. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> you know, you think about it though, really. 203,000 miles and, and this is the failure. Um, you know, but it seems like a huge price to pay for one damn lifter. And I guarantee you it's going to get 16 lifters, brand new lifters, because I am not going back into this motor for this man. And luckily the screens did their job and caught the, most of the metal. This is the screen that goes to the high pressure oil pump. It did its job, didn't tear. Uh, the oil filter did its job, so it did save the motor. And here's the damaged camshaft. It's taken several thousandths off of that with all the damage. You know, it just slid, this part just slid, broken, right across that lobe until it damaged it, you know. So, we can't reuse the camshaft. It's ruined. And Your local dealership wouldn't have gone this deep into this motor. They'd have put a short block in it, but you know, over here at Power Stroke Specialty and PowerStrokeHelp.com, this is what we do, man. We go the distance. Make sure that the customer gets taken care of and that it's fixed correctly.